Thank Doctor, you for your thank, service. Doctor, thank you for your testimony. Thank you for being here very much. The chair calls Dr. Ben Edwards. Ben Edwards. Dr. Edwards, welcome. Get situated there, then introduce yourself and give us your testimony. Thank you. Ben Edwards, trained as a family physician, did my undergrad at Baylor, UT Houston Medical School, and then Waco for family practice residency training where I was chief resident. I spent the first seven years in private practice at Garza County Health Clinic in Post, Texas as the only physician in the county. The last seven years, eight years, I've had my own practice, Veritas Medical in Lubbock, Abilene, and San Angelo. We have offices. <clears throat> Thank you for the opportunity to testify today. I'd like to begin with a reminder to everyone about the definition of evidence-based medicine that Sackett, Strauss, et al. laid out back in 2000. They stated that the elements of evidence-based practice are the integration of best research evidence with clinical expertise and patient values. Patient values trump clinical expertise, and clinical expertise trumps the scientific evidence. <clears throat> I'm also concerned that the forced and coerced COVID-19 vaccinations would, in my opinion, be a violation of the Nuremberg Code, the UN International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, Article 7, the UN Universal Declaration of Human Rights, Article 3, and UNESCO's Article 6 of the Universal Declaration of Bioethics and Human Rights. In addition, I have some concerns similar to what uh, Senator Hall already mentioned. According to the CDC's Vaccine Adverse Event Reporting System, which I have some updated numbers from last night when I downloaded these, 4,178 deaths are now being reported on VAERS. To give some context, over the past 20 years, all vaccinations combined, there were a reported 4,182 deaths over the past 20 years. In the past four months, we're now sitting at 4,178 deaths associated with the COVID vaccine reported to VAERS. This includes a 15-year-old boy in Colorado, two 16-year-old girls in Wisconsin, 17-year-old girl in Wisconsin, and a 17-year-old boy, all healthy. He was in New Hampshire. <clears throat> the evidence is pretty clear that VAERS grossly underestimates the adverse events that are reported. A study commissioned by the Department of Health and Human Services, this is in 2010, and Harvard carried out this study. And the conclusion was only about 1% of adverse reactions are ever reported to VAERS. A similar study in 2015 by Shimbukru et al. came to a similar conclusion. A 1995 report by CDC also found that certain adverse uh, reactions to vaccines are reported about 1% of the time. Even the vaccine manufacturers themselves have estimated a 50-fold underreporting of adverse reactions. So I have grave concern about the underreporting of these adverse reactions to VAERS. And even at that, we're over 4,000 now in deaths. To give you some context, as to, uh, Senator Hall already mentioned, the 1976 swine flu epidemic, after recording 500 cases of paralysis and 53 uh, deaths, the vaccine was pulled off the market. Personally, I've received numerous reports from family members of my patients, close friends to my patients, that within hours and to days of receiving the vaccine, they've suffered from stroke, heart attack, pulmonary embolism, blood clots, sudden death, and as far as these family members knew, none of these were reported by the medical staff as being associated with the vaccine. So my concern is there is indeed a vast underreporting. Lastly, I would say that of Harvey Rich's data that 53% of, of Texans are, have natural immunity, studies have shown a two to three fold increased risk of adverse reaction to this vaccine if you've already had COVID. Natural immunity infers a more robust immunity than vaccine immunity could, but vaccinating someone who's already robustly immune increases their risk of adverse reaction two to threefold. Two different studies that show that. And probably the last uh, thing I would have to say is um, I'm very much a proponent of preserving the individual doctor-patient relationship. It's a sacred relationship, and, and I believe nothing should come between that. And I Ultimately, it's up to the patient to decide how they want to treat their body. 
Um, and on a personal note, I believe that God gave us an amazing, robust immune system. And I don't think you can improve on God. No one, not everyone obviously has to agree with that. But for those that do and choose to rely on that natural immunity, I think we need to uphold that right to do so without any adverse um, outcomes on their livelihood. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. Happy to answer questions. Dr. Barnes, thank you. Uh, any questions from the witness? Senator Hall? I do have a couple of questions for you. One, one is, uh, do people with natural immunity to COVID need a vaccine? And is there any increased risk of the natural immune system individuals, individuals having an adverse reaction to the vaccine? Natural immunity is more robust than vaccine immunity. There's a study from the original SARS um, back in 2002. The people that survived that first SARS, they've looked at them 17 years later, and they, this, they showed a robust immunity still to SARS-CoV-1 17 years later. Historically, we've, already, we, we've always known that natural immunity tends to last a lifetime, i.e. the measles. Natural immunity will last a lifetime. So, no, I don't believe there's any need to vaccinate someone who's already acquired natural immunity. And we need to remember natural immunity is more than just antibodies. You have T cells, natural killer cells. You've got the innate immune response. You've got a robust immune system, not just antibodies. And to the second part, reiterating that if you've already had COVID naturally, and some of these will be asymptomatic people, and some people won't have a positive antibody test because their T cells were strong enough, they didn't need to mount an antibody response. So you can't catch all these guys with an antibody screen. But if you've had natural immunity, over 50% of the Texans have, then you're at a two- to three-fold increased risk of adverse reaction if you get vaccinated. Can, can people do anything about their immune system? Absolutely. Thank you for asking, Senator Hall. I transitioned from conventional family practice medicine to integrative medicine, integrating our God-given natural ability for the body to fix itself. And it's clear in the literature that if we steward this God-given design through nutrition, proper nutrition, hydration, exercise, sunlight, most importantly, peace, not fear. Fear has overcome this nation. The spirit of fear that I don't submit to has overcome this nation, in my opinion. And if that's influencing policy decisions, I don't, I don't want to have to be subjected to those policies. So, yes, there's much that you can do to improve your immune system. And it sounds too simple, but it's true. Eat God food, not man food. Exercise, get some sunlight, move around a little bit, and most importantly, be at peace. Your immune system will do what it's designed to do. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Edwards. I don't, that's... Dr. Thanks for your testimony. Thank you for being Welcome. here. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. The chair calls Dr. Amy Offit.